Hello, Ken Spriggs here. Uh, I wanted to do a bit of an intro to this video, um, introducing a buddy build uh, with one of my subscribers. And I just wanted to kind of uh, preface this. Uh, we filmed this over uh, Skype, and Skype has its own recording uh, ability. It's the first time I've used it, so please forgive the little bit of choppiness. Uh, a few parts of it just didn't work right in the video, and I had to cut out a little bits of it so it would work because it kept freezing up on me. Uh, but I think I did manage to get it to work out in the end. Uh, at one point, we're side by side and it flips. And I don't know why it does that. So just kind of bear with me. Uh, but let me go ahead and introduce this video and uh, and talk about this buddy build. Hello, Ken Spriggs here uh, with a, a new build video. And I'm joined today by a uh, fellow modeler and one of my subscribers by the name of Tim Striner. He goes by Gloom and Paper Craft Guy or Glue and Paper Guy. Uh, paper craft. He has his own YouTube channel. He had approached me and asked if I was interested in doing a buddy build with him and uh, a little bit of a unique build where he's going to be building a paper version of the model and I'm going to be building a styrene plastic model of the version. And the model that we've decided on or he actually asked me about is uh, of the Star Wars ATST chicken walker. So He's building a paper model, which is going to be very large. It's going to be about three feet tall. And I'm building the Bandai um, version of that, the, the plastic kit. And we're just going to put our, our own spin on it and our own uh, creativity on it. And, um, and then we're going to be filming these together and doing a buddy build. So, uh, so let me get and introduce Tim and, uh, and tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm Tim Striner. I'm the glue and paper guy. Uh, I've been doing paper modeling for... 20 years or so it's uh, plastic when I was much younger the paper's cheap and easy and so it's uh you know it was I didn't have a lot of bills and I had a lot of good printers uh so this ought to be fun because then you know I can do something that matches a plastic model and we can see how the two line up Yep, definitely. And I've, I've looked into some paper models. I did a little bit of dabbling with it um, early on, and I tried a few things. It's definitely very different uh, skill sets, but a lot of the similar ones, too. Um, you're, you're getting a pre-printed model, or basically on the paper, and you cut it out and you put it together. And some of these are really, really super complex. Uh, you might think of something simple when you're thinking like a, a paper airplane, but that's not at all the case. Some of these have hundreds of parts, very unique parts. Uh, I mean, I really uh, credit the, the people that create these, that they're just fantastic artists, that they're not only designing this thing, but they're figuring out how to make pieces in two dimensional. That when you cut them out and you fold them and you take this tab and this tab, you end up with a three dimensional piece. You know, and that's pretty amazing how they do that. Uh, and, and, and they're also already pre-printed in color and things like that. Now, um, we're going to talk here about uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, Tim's going to be doing some modifications on his, certainly, and he's going to talk about that. And then I'll also talk about what I'm going to be doing as well. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about what approach each of us is going to take uh, with this model. So um, I'll go ahead and, and start, obviously, using the Bandai uh, ATST kit. And I'm sorry if that's backwards, <laughs> I'm using my front camera. But it is the 148 scale plastic kit, them, of course. So uh, my plan is to do something that um, kind of takes after one of the episodes of The Mandalorian from the first season, where there was a, a group of bandits living in the woods and they were terrorizing these villagers and stealing their crops. And they had uh, an old ATST that they had converted and they were using it and had glowing red eyes. And so uh, The Mandalorian and uh, Cara Dune uh, battle this, this um, they battle the people, but they also have to take down this ATSD because it's very powerful. And so they, they build a little trap for it to drop it through. And so I'm gonna be looking at that thing being destroyed. So I'm gonna build it first out of the box, and then I'm gonna look at uh, some type of an explosion where the sides are starting to buckle and it's starting to, to blow up. Uh, I'm gonna be, using some techniques that I saw recently from Augie Gonzalez. He did a version of a, um, a TIE fighter that he had in a resin, and he made an explosion on the ground using some expanding foam, insulation foam, which was pretty cool. So I'm gonna use a similar idea, 
where the sides are starting to buckle and it's starting to explode. But it's going to have some other elements where they're they're trying to destroy it uh, and trap it. So there'll be some lights, of course, in that as well. So, and um, what are you going to be doing as far as your modifications on yours, Tim? He's seven inches tall. Uh, a kit designed by a, 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 an individual in Japan. The gentleman doesn't speak much English, so I wasn't able to, you know, get to know him to a great degree. Uh, Sci-fi papercraft. He does. Uh, he's got Falcon. He's got ATST. I think he has an AT-AT and some other stuff. When he does these, he does them deliberately simplified. So, go big or go home just is a thing with me. Uh, and I had him printed four times the size. And what I'll end up doing is using it as for proportion because there's components missing from this one and it's not quite right. Uh, I think that I'll add some lights. It's going to be built a very great deal like how you would build a styrene kit. Uh, I'm going to end up painting it, uh, uh, you know, priming the paper so that the texture of the paint is different, a lot of other things. Um, and scope creep is a big deal for me too. I, uh, will end up articulating all of the joints, hatch, guns, everything. Uh, I think I know how to make him to where he'll stay standing up. Involves sandpaper in the joints, I think. Uh, I'd be a kick once it's done. Yeah. That's, it. that's, that's pretty cool. It's, in, in a way, you're doing 2D modeling where you print it out in 2D, but it has a lot of the similar features of 3D where you can make it whatever size you want it to be. You simply enlarge the, the print because it's all printed out on paper anyway. And so you like you're saying, you have a small version, which is really cool. And then you're going to make a much larger 3D version. And uh, so that's pretty awesome. I really like that idea. Um, and what are you going to do? Is You said you're going to make sure that it stands and everything. I know it's made of paper. What kind of things are you thinking about to, to add integrity to the legs and that kind of thing? This guy's going to be uh, built largely out of... Uh Map board, same stuff you, for the map that you get from uh, you know a professional mounter of frames. Okay. And that stuff's lots different, you think. Sure. So between that and copious amounts of uh, a quarter inch and three sixteenths dowel rod. Okay. You can make some marvelous joints. I've got a couple that are you know I have to go study up on degrees of freedom, but they can mm -hmm. do this, they can do this in combination. Uh, and uh, the hatch, obviously. Sure. So I think what will happen ultimately is I, I need to make some sort of friction element inside the joint so that while it moves freely, it tends to stay in place. They can just slap some sandpaper <laughs> in there. Yeah. <laughs> and it should stand up just fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you're definitely doing a lot of scratch building, as it were, too. Oh, yeah. And and modifying quite a bit out of it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what we're gonna do as far as a display and or a diorama. All right, so, um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna do. What I'm planning on doing for my diorama is like I said, I'm making this to be something that was from the episode with the Mandalorian. And in the episode, what they ended up doing was they figured they, they're not going to get through that armor, so they have to somehow topple it and get it to fall into a pit. So they, uh, the villagers had all these water pits where they were, they were fishing for these little blue fish, I believe it was. And so they took these logs and they put them over the, one of the water pits right at the edge of the woods, and they put you know, trees and other shrub over it to, to mask it. And then they just hid back behind it and they lured this lure it until it would come in. And finally it fell down, one of its legs fell down into the pit and it just kind of disrupted the top of it. And they were able to, I think they lobbed a grenade into it or they blasted it and it blew up. So I'm gonna just make a small little diorama of like a ground and it's gonna have the little pit with the logs, maybe a little bit of water sticking through. And one of the legs is gonna be partially like Obviously, sticking down, like I said, starting to explode. Um, and then maybe a little bit of diorama, maybe some, little small trees or something right there by it to, to kind of give it some character uh, and just display it. But right in the center is going to be the ATST 
being destroyed and exploding and uh and uh, kind of imitating that so uh, you have some ideas on yours as well in fact you finished one of them um so what are your ideas for your display or yeah, for your i i have a an otor laser cutter uh and i had used it to engrave a series of things uh yeah. the, the sign that i made you and other things yeah so he made me a, time to, he gave me a sign for the uh aries 1p instructions for the zero gravity toilet it's really cool i have it hanging <laughs> on my wall which I, uh, my i've got one in my bathroom too and I, and I sent one to interstellar modeling um so now it's time to figure out how to actually cut things so the solution was obvious that's pretty cool this cool. little piece of uh of uh you know one by underneath gives it some weight mm -hmm. that's a combination of foam core and uh, mat board cut with the laser cool. and the, uh, the foam core I spray painted with some uh, primer paint mm -hmm. and it gave it the most the deepest richest color that's so freaking dramatic uh, yeah it is. so you know uh, the carts before the horse the other thing that's the first diorama I've ever made oh pretty cool yeah, this is a combination of, uh, of uh, Interstellar Modeler has recently used this marvelous paper clay. Yeah. It has some downsides, but uh, texture's fantastic. It doesn't weigh anything. And right. the same drill, I got a piece of wood underneath it. So we're going to have us a desert wash here. I, I don't know that that emulates any movies, but, uh, yeah. you know, a little bit of just all dry but with some rock and stuff like that. And uh, I got... The, the, I found some really cute little weeds and stuff from the yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really jazzed about this. About ready to paint. Yeah, yeah, I like that uh, lightweight stuff. I've been looking at what you, you mentioned. All games always mentioned. We've tried another one that was a lightweight clay, but I've seen the other one that he talked about. I can't think of the name, but I'll put some links in the video in the uh, end of the video. And um, we're actually when we build it, we'll put some links in it as the materials we're using. But yeah, that's the benefit of it. A lot of people use plaster, but plaster is difficult to, to get a, a proper texture. It's really heavy. This kind of stuff is really nice and it, it dries quickly. It dries, air dries, and you can do different things with it. So I really like that as, a lot as well. Uh, and I, I like to use a lot of those kind of things as well um, to do the diorama part. And I also use styrofoam. I like to use the thick, like pink insulation foam. Actually, the stuff I get is green, I believe. <laughs> that stuff's really good to use. You can get a basic shape. And then, like you're talking about, you use this light clay to mold the texture and put it over top of it. Yeah, and get a nice looking, <laughs> a nice looking image. So that's really cool. So all right. So I think those are going to be pretty awesome. Uh, definitely going to be a nice way to display these builds. And uh, and then uh, complete this buddy build. So, all right. All right, so that sounds fantastic. So very excited about this buddy build, uh, seeing what each of us brings to the table and how we bring our creativity. Uh, and definitely, you know, we're using different tools and different things and different elements and really just coming at the same property, coming at the ATST from Star Wars and just putting our own spin on it and how we want to display it. So, um, so what we'll be doing is uh, as we each complete a certain part of it, we'll go ahead and put together uh, the subsequent videos and we'll just show the process as each of us builds the different parts of this. And obviously in the end, we'll have a final reveal of the, um, of the, the final project with both of us. So uh, we don't have a set time frame, but obviously, you know, the next month or two or so i'm thinking probably two months give or take we're yeah. probably gonna be working on it and um and then posting video, video bills as we complete it so um all right did you have anything else that you wanted to add uh tim oh i'm getting a kick out of this whole thing and i'm really looking forward to working with you ken it's uh, i'll learn a lot from you, and, and, you know, well, thanks. we'll, we'll I, find out a bunch of fun stuff here yeah and uh, i'm learning things from you i mean you're doing the laser cutting, which obviously I've never done and I don't have. And I think that really opens a big doorway, too, to doing a whole ton of things. So I'm excited to see what you're doing to take that basic paper idea and design and really augment it and turn it into something that involves your own creativity, your own scratch building and things like that. I love the, the zero gravity toilet poster that you gave. I think it's perfect. 
and when they um, when they released the uh, the Aries 1B uh, probably early <clears throat> next year, and I built that, that's going to look great right next to that since that's where we saw <laughs> we saw Hayward Floyd sitting there intently reading this 10 step really you know paragraph 10 paragraph instructions on how to use this toilet and you're looking like oh my goodness <laughs> so so definitely very excited as well and uh and then we'll be we'll be posting the first video as soon as we get something together and and uh and show the progress so all right well thanks again tim i'm looking forward to this as well and um and then we'll be getting this started here uh right very promptly thanks a lot all right